Welcome everyone to ETOX Art, Culture, and Science Discussions, where every week by Argonne Art and Academy, we have wonderful speakers from art, culture, and science fields. Today, we have an extremely special guest, Mr. Oscar Carrera. He is one of the original Freedom Writers. If you watched the movie, you know. If you have not, go watch it now, right after this discussion. Today, we're going to talk about his journey specifically of how he became a Freedom Writer, and the movie as well. So welcome, Mr. Carrera. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Um, thank you, Zaina, for the invitation. It's it's always a great opportunity, a, a great to continue to share our story, especially with new generations of readers, new generations of storytellers, new generations of fans. It's always important to keep our story alive. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to um, come into your platform and share our story. Thank you. Uh, we would like to start by just getting to know you. We know that you were born in New York and then moved to LA. And the movie kind of records on your journey, but we would like to hear it from you. So how did you end up in uh, Miss Grenwell's class? Um, well, we, you know, interestingly, we were we once we moved to Los Angeles, we moved around a little bit until we were um, my father, you know, different job was able to move us along to a better situation every single time, nicer city. So in this case, in 1993, I believe he moved us to Long Beach. So based on that, I was placed, and based on my grades, they were not the best. Um, Reputation-wise, as far as behavior, was not the best. So I was placed in, in Ms. G's class. Ms. G's class was a, a first-year teacher, so she ended up, unfortunately, getting you know not the best students on campus. So that's how I, I was placed into her class. I moved into that new school that particular year, and I was placed based on my you know grade and low test scores. I was placed in that particular class as a beginning English level. So in that class, once you, so can you tell us the comparison between your first day and your last day, as much as you can remember the feelings that we have seen, again, we have seen in the movie, the huge dramatic change, but you personally, what was are the first feelings that you felt in the first day and the last day? Or just like the first month, last month, you get what yeah. I mean. Um, I have to be honest, the first day, the first couple of days, I was in culture shock. The reason why is because at that point, all the schools that I ever went to were mostly Hispanic. So 99, 98% Hispanic. By the time I, I started high school in, in Long Beach, it, it was a multicultural campus. So it was the first exposure to that for me. So it took me back a little bit. I didn't know how to handle that. I didn't have, you know, very much experience managing other people other than Hispanic, for example. So it was definitely um, something to to adapt, something to change, to see the multicultural environment that we had there, people from you know different backgrounds. We were close to the beach, um, that our high school was close to the beach. So we had, you know, people that were that live in very affluent communities, very, you know, compared to other communities where many of the, the students at Wilson at that time will bus an hour, two hours to get to school. So it was definitely a culture shock at first. You know, compared to the end, you know, at, at the end of after the four years, it, being exposed to that environment, I learned to love it. I learned to accept it. I, I learned to embrace the differences from other people's cultures, other people's traditions. So at first, it, it, you know, it was challenging. But towards the end, as you saw the progression of the movie, it definitely helped us out a lot. It, it helped me out to open up my eyes and be open minded to the differences that people brought into the equation. How do you think the friendship that you had between your between your classmates impacted, I would say, your grades, uh, your growth personally, and the way it had on the Freedom Writers Project? Just that friendship bond and connection. So it's you know the students with Miss G and also the students between themselves that they had a great bond. What do you want to say about the you know the friendship bond that you guys had? You know, at the beginning, I'm not going to lie, it wasn't the best. You know, we clashed heads. There was a lot of disagreements, a lot of, you know, altercations, verbal and physical altercations. But little by little, we started accepting, you know, what made us unique and different. And, and I think that through the exposure that Ms. G provided us and that opportunity that she gave us through literature, through projects, through community service things, projects that we would do, we started to see the impact and we started to see um, you know, that that was the, the wrong way to handle certain disputes, certain differences. And little by little, we, we became more understanding of our differences. We became more accepting of our differences. And towards the end, you know, we became not only um, friends, we, we ended up as friends, but more of them, you know, I still have friendships with, with them and now their families and kids for over 20 years. So we became a family. 
And I think at the end of all of this, that that's the most, the proudest thing I could say that I look at them as family, not as friends or not a, a, as classmates, but as family members now, an extended family, for sure. That's wonderful. So you mentioned like the projects, the writing that you guys did. How did you feel the first day that you received your journals? So yeah, what, that, what, the, what did that feel like, you know, having just a journal handed out to you? You know, what were the expectations? What did you feel? Did you feel like there would be consistency among the classmates or would it work out? Would it not work out? You know, at first, and we let her know, we thought that she was she was trying to be too nosy, try to find, you know, too many, get too much information from our lives, our personal lives. So at that time, especially with the students she had, we didn't feel comfortable sharing at first. Um, she had to earn our respect, which, you know, eventually she did. But I, I remember when she gave us that opportunity to share our, our experiences in writing, it helped us. It was lethargic to some of us. It, it helped us. Um, you know, put our feelings on paper for some of us, especially like in my culture is not, it's, it's uh, sharing our feelings is not something that it, we highly in, are encouraged because, you know, we're, we believe that, you know, that men have to take care of, of everything and it shouldn't be emotionally attached to certain things. So it was challenging for me as, as, as far as to open up that way. But, you know, but we tried it, you know, we, we followed her, her guidance and her support. And then most importantly, because the way she did it anonymously, she didn't know who was writing. She would just open up the closet, the, the closet in the room, leave that period. We will leave our journals there. And then the following day, she we will have some type of comments. And she never knew exactly who was writing what. She, I'm pretty sure she had her ideas. But at the same time, it, it was our way to, to express um, and, and to, you know, just share some of the things that we were experiencing at, our, at that point during our lives, which was relieving. In this case, for me, it was relieving because I was able to put it on paper and it, you know, took a weight off my shoulders. So definitely, definitely it was something getting used to. Um, how did you feel when you first learned when, when she first revealed that it will be turned into a book that we have today? <laughs> you know, it, we tried, we, it, it's, it's not as easy as, as it, it seems in the, in the movie. We tried, we got a lot of notes from a lot of publishing houses um, and it wasn't until, you know, Double Day, the house that published our, our book, came back came back with a, with an offer to publish our book towards midway into our senior year. As you can imagine, you know, kids um, at that point, you know, young adults that we never imagined in our wildest dreams that we were able to accomplish something like that. And when we got the news, as you can imagine, we screamed, we yelled, we cried, we hugged. And we were extremely happy for what the future would bring with that, having that news. And, you know, right before high school, graduating high school, that was, you know, icing on the cake because we were not supposed to graduate. I remember that year we had a record, record-breaking record graduating class because our Wilson at that point was in a transitional period where it became a, a distinguished scholar high school. And then it became, because of certain uh, legislation that passed in the early 90s, it was forced to open up their doors and bring in uh, other students. And so the reputation, everything suffered. So we noticed that the, the next few years, there was a high rate of dropout rates and stuff like that. So with our 150 that we all graduated high school, that were originally part of the class, we were, I think we had a graduating class of, of over a thousand uh, graduates that day. So uh, I remember, you know, that's, uh, it was an interesting transition, but definitely getting that news beforehand and then graduating was a, was a great accomplishment for many of us. That's awesome. So currently you are Dean of Students and Athletic Director uh, for Coral Academy of Science Las Vegas. As an educator yourself, um, do you think there has been improvements in the education system for the better or for, for worse and how and you know what are some rooms for improvement do you think there are today? You know, de de definitely, you know, education, I've been in education for over 20 years, you know, uh, teaching and uh, in addition to teaching, coaching and administrative work, not only just here currently in Las Vegas, definitely there's always room for improvement for in, in, in academics. Um, so especially here in Vegas, you know, we have the fifth largest school district. We definitely could def see improvements being made here for our student body, uh, for our teachers, more support, more programs, uh, after school programs for our kids, for example, will make a huge difference. Um, expose them to literature, expose them to community service projects. That's one of the things she did very well with us and she made us involved in our community. Something like that, I think, needs to be here now in the leadership role that I am here, you know, training our teachers to engage our students, regardless of, you know, background, regardless of economical status. 
for example, engage and create those programs that, that we motivate our teachers to want to be in the classroom, that we motivate our students to come to school and, and, and want to learn and be, be part of the community that they, they, they're part of. So definitely that's one way we could definitely focus in addition to academics and all that stuff. But I think that we need to engage our students um, in, in a little bit more in, in projects and, and things that we could expose them to reality. You know, teaching about life is one of the most important things. You know, that's how she was able to get our attention. She thought about life. She thought she was able to connect the reality of life outside into the classroom by bringing literature, by bringing, you know, projects that she would, she would, um, create. So I think that's, that's one of the things that we're currently missing. You know, education has changed over the last 20 years, you know, it went from, you know, more student-based to now more parent-based. Now we pay more attention to what parents have to say, and we're more worried about parents than actually educating our, our, our students and, and what they actually need to succeed. That's awesome. So there are some methods that Ms. G had implemented in her class, but you know, one thing that really attracts attention is the use of art, we would say. So with the fundraising events and with just the writing, it's the art that seems to bring students together and, you know, be kind of like the universal, you know, bringing unifying factor. So do you, you know, engage in other forms of art other than writing, we would say? Um, definitely. Um, uh, music, for example, giving presentations, uh, it's one of the things that, that I love. One of the things that I incorporated a lot in, in our, in my classes, when I was te in the classroom teaching, I would create a lot of projects where the students were the focus. But before I, I had my students present, I would present, I would model everything just so they could see what a, a presentation would look like, what a finished product would look like, because and these days, we it's hard to get to see teachers that want to do that for their students. That want to engage them by and showing them and model them, and model to them what a what a final product looks like or a final presentation looks like. Um, it, it, I don't see that as much as as I would like to. And that's one of the things that I, I think I connected very well with my students over the course of many years of teaching. That I was able to expose to put myself out there to you know get a guitar and sing in, in front of the kids, motivate them, encourage them in many different ways. You know, being the first one, like, for example, um, when a fundraising event is happening, you know, I was the first one to donate and then I will match the highest donor uh, in the classroom. But, you know, just to if we want our students to do this, we need to be the pioneers and, and teach them and guide them and, and show them the way. And that's one, one of the things that, you know, that I tend to do and, I, and I've done with her in the past. You know, thanks to her, she taught us to to go out there and reach out to the community and not be afraid. You are going to say you are going to get a lot of notes you know, for the community, but not, not to get discouraged and to continue to pursue forward and until somebody says yes, you know, and, and that's one, that's one of the approach that I always, you know, teach my students. That's one approach that I, I, I always guide, you know, do everything I do, especially now in the, in the admin role that I'm currently in. Um, I'm always trying to do different things for the, for the, our, our teachers, get them recognized, give them that, that, that exposure. And a lot of people say, say, tell me no, but a lot of people say yes. You know, there's those things that we like to reward our workers with. And once we, you know, as ETOX team and we watched the movie, we literally sat down and we said, what is the main sentence or what is the main theme that we can like think of? And when, uh, you just talked about, you know, wanting to do things and wanting to do things for your students and encouraging them to want something, you know, a positive change, wanting to reach out. And we said, if you want to heal someone, you can. That's the message that we have gotten. So it's about, you know, wanting something, you know, being passionate about it. And just a funny thing that we discussed why Miss G didn't, you know, heal her husband in the movie. Because again, it's like a whole other discussion, but we thought about her passion, what was her passion and what was her passion about towards her students. And again, if there is a will, there is a way. That's like a message. And since we're talking about the movie, so after so many years from publishing the book, you know, can you talk about the um the progression of how the movie happened once they first reach out to you? How did you guys feel? Were there any concerns? And what was the you know whole pro process of the movie happening? You know, once um, the the book um, was published, they immediately we started talking about the possibility of the of the book being a film. So we brainstormed with with the, everybody in the foundation, a lot of the funerals, to see which actors will play Miss G. And, you know, from that point, it, it originally started. So they a script was created. It was sent to multiple, um, I, I guess, uh, movie studios, 
many of them said no. They passed on the on the film until um, MTV got a hold of the script, and MTV was the one that went ahead and uh, went ahead and published the rights to it and made it into into the film. And one of the requirements that we had was that you know that the actress um, played played that. I, I can't remember her name right now. Um, let me see. Uh, oh. Well, the actress, because she looks so like uh, once it comes up to me, I, I remember. But um, uh, once the actress was on board, that that's how uh, we, we wanted because she represented. She was just a two time Oscar winner at that point. Um, and then I can't remember. I'm trying to do my best to remember the name. But Larry Swan. There you go, Hilary Swank. Yeah. So once she got it, she became on board. Then we at that point, we were we were um, excited. We were part of, of the interview process for the actors for the film. Uh, for example, um, one of the one of the I guess most famous scenes in the movie is when a, a student gets up and reads a journal entry, and every we time thought we thought that was you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So yeah. again, I was gonna get on to there, but please continue. <laughs> no. So that that particular student, you know, he comes in. He's never acted in his life a day, and he we give him that particular script and to to read. So when he reads it at the end, he starts breaking down, and he tells us that he's homeless himself. You know, so I, at that point, immediately we looked at him and said, you know, we want him on the film. So we did have some some say so. There's some freedom writers that do cameos on the actual film itself. Um, throughout the film, there's a, there's about four that do cameos on there. So we were very involved in the process. We were very involved in the music, selecting of the music um, for the film, the soundtrack for the film. So it was a great process. Um, Danny DeVito was was a, a co-director there. So he, they brought us up on, on, on set a, a lot. Uh, we did not film the, the the film on the high school that we went to because of, of legal legal rights or legal issues that, that didn't allow us. So we chose a different high school to record to film the film. Uh, so we were on stage, we were on set a lot. We participated a lot. We so it, it was a great depiction of what actually happened. A few things did change for purposes of entertainment purposes for the film. But other than that, I think they did a good representation overall on the film. And they brought us along the journey. The whole journey along. I think it is wonderful that you guys were involved very much, very heavily on the film because it is your story that they were trying to depict. And regarding the movie industry, do you know, do you think there were any exaggerations or any, you know, dramatization in the movie? There was a few scenes that 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 were changed for once again for entertainment purposes, but we um at that point we signed off on it. That's one of the one of the major reasons why we felt that we needed to tell our story. And that's where the idea of our documentary film came into place. We enjoyed it. We were happy with, with the finished product. But at the end, we had hundreds of hours of videos of pictures that we had that we have taken along our journey um, and our years and, and, and I believe decades of, of doing events that we decided to f find a benefactor. And then from there, start our, our documentary film. So do you have a specific scene in your mind that's like, hey, this is, you know, not so accurate, but for entertainment purposes, it is better, you know, that they did this? Um, I, I think one of the main the, the main scenes is um that was a little bit um that a little bit exaggerated was could possibly be the 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 scene where the the fighting start to starts to take place. Mm -hmm. Um, it showcased one day, but it was actually about a week. So we had that um, racial tensions were at a high point at that point. And uh, it, that, that particular scene expanded for about a week's time, a week and a half's time where um, you, it was dangerous walking alone. It was dangerous walking to classic class. So it was intense. So I'm happy they didn't showcase it as much, but that was a constant problem uh, at our schools where, you know, racial tensions were at the high and, you know, certain the school was divided in certain ways where if you were not part of that, unfortunately, that color, you were not allowed unless you 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 wanted some some issues. Yeah. So that's the only part that that I felt that was a little bit um, that could have been elaborated a little bit more because it happened more than just one time. Definitely. So what, uh, when you watch the movie, we thought Miss G had a lot of different good methods that are very obvious, also very non obvious as well like regrouping her students, you know, learning how to pronounce their names correctly just by listening to them, you know, building empathy and, you know, finding the common denominator among them, you know, the just the, you know, their backgrounds and the struggles that they face. 
what are some, you know, methods that you use as, a, as an educator? We kind of talked about it, you know, once you said, you know, you're encouraging your students to be out there and, you know, always, uh, you know, connect with the community. But what are some of your methods as an educator today that you use with your students to, you know, give back to education? Yeah, you know, definitely um, exposing them to to reality, bringing in literature from the outside into reality into the world, encouraging them to write their own, for example, their own books, and you know, and then publish them at the end of the year. They were they would publish a book, and then they they would get you know have them autograph their books, engaging them into that, uh, writing presentations, doing community service projects where we will find a, a great cause and fundraise, for example. Um, we will, some of the projects that I've done in the past is fundraise for recycling bins, fundraise for PE supplies. We will go out, reach out to communities, create uh, so like a social media campaign. So expose them to 21st century, um, you know, social media where we will create a video. We will um, bring outside problems that are happening around the world and address them, talk, discuss them. Um, in, in class, create some type of a solution. We would do um, speech and debate. Um, for example, we would do debate where we will hit some very controversial topics and they will have to prepare, educate themselves on the topic and then we will have, and then the winning team will will win and they'll get to choose what they want, like with pizza party, something like that. So just exposing them to current events, I, I think has helped. Um, it helped me a lot during my, my, my teaching, addressing those things that are challenging that that are um, that are challenging our students, uh, for example, and uh, and address it in a way in a, in a constructive way where I gave them you know the opportunity to research to present their point of views and and, and then to defend them. So in addition to all of the normal stuff, the essay writing, the reading, the the journaling, that's one of the things I I, I always kept journaling. I think journal, journaling we started with her with Erin, she exposed us to it, and, and then I continued. But I, honestly, that's one of the things that I used the most. In my classrooms, and the kids loved it. You know, they they we will start from fun journal topics to you know we will step it up and a little bit more serious topics, more current event kind of things topics, and, and address it. And I noticed that by teaching them about life, in addition to the current the curriculum that we had to teach, you know, it gives a gives them a good impression of of what to do in the classroom. You know, or in this case, it worked wonders for me. That's awesome. So let's talk about uh, the foundation. So how did Freedom Writers evolve into a foundation? What are you guys doing today? How can we support? And uh, what are some of the events that you guys do nationwide? And yeah. You know, once we, we got the news that the, that the book was gonna be published, we wanted our story to, to continue to be current. So one of the ideas that came about early on once we got the news was create a foundation. So what we did and what we all decided to do at that point was that anything that any type of funds or royalties that we will get from that or eventually if it were to become a film, it will go back and we will give it back to the foundation. And that's how the foundation started. The foundation started with us in, uh, with the hope of, of continuing our story and to duplicate our, our story in other classrooms. So that, that's what we that's what the idea of the foundation came about. So once the foundation was created, we all agreed that whatever money was was raised or made out of whatever thing we did dealing with the freedom will go back to the foundation to fund itself and continue to succeed um, without you know anything else. So in this case, that's how it started. That's how the, the idea started, and it has evolved over the course of many years, over twenty years now, has evolved to what it is today. And currently, what what we do today, we provide. Um, training where we bring in teachers from all over the world. As of right now, we have we have trained teachers um, using our curriculum, using our, our our approach to education. We have trained teachers in every single state in this country, and we have trained teachers from over 25 countries around the world. And we continue to expand. In addition to that, we've created an outreach program where people like myself, freedom writer, goes to classrooms, universities, businesses, or anything that to inspire. Um, uh, using our story, using our book, many hundreds of teachers across the country use our book as part of their curriculum. And that's when they, they get an opportunity to reach out to us. And then we go and we, we talk to the students, we do Q&A sessions, presentations and that sort. Another thing that we do is that we have created our curriculum with the help of many of our teachers that have come to our teacher trainings. And using that curriculum, we go, we, we engage, we do trainings. Right now there was a, a, a training this past week at my nephew's school, who he, he's, a, he's a, a teacher in California, and Aaron went, a few of the freedom writers went, and they, they did a training there for their teachers. So, and that's one of the things, and the last thing the foundation does is we, we do scholarships. So we, we fundraise money 
And then we we give um, graduating seniors the opportunity to apply to our scholarship, those first time um, graduating high schoolers that are willing to go to college. And if you get selected, then we pay for for their um, their uh, college education. So that's one of the things that I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy that we do what well, the outreach program is great. The, the teaching and training our teachers to you know reunite that that light, that power, that desire to to educate. And you know we we do a wonderful job. And we actually have one coming up in March, where I told uh, Ms. B, our counselor, that I, I would love for her to go and experience it. or introduce her to all of our foundations so she sees how uh, we interact with with our teachers, how we inspire our teachers. A lot of our teachers that come to our program they go back and they become game changers in their communities. They they go back to school, get masters, get doctor degrees, become superintendent, become congressman, become teachers of the year. So they they come and they and they're inspired. They they're inspired to to change the world. And you know, that's that's Ms. B's philosophy, that's our philosophy and that's what we hope to to achieve through our foundation. That's awesome. So regarding, you know, you guys contribute to the education of young people, but as young people how can we contribute to society and education in collaboration with Freedom Writers? Just, you know, is it by getting inspired by them? Can we contact the foundation? Or do you guys do any collaboration projects with young people? Just so we are out there inspired by you guys' story in order to, you know, give back to our communities. You know, we're, we're, all, we're always, a, we're, you know, open for any type of collaboration with students. In the past, for example, what we just did, we sent out a massive call. And we, we posted on social media, we did it on our podcast, we did it, and we wanted writers, freedom writers from all around the world. So we were able to get 50 freedom writers, 50 students, 50 um, high schoolers that are going through this, that, that, that were going or are going through the same issues we went 20 years ago. So we were able to select 50. So what we did is that we once we selected those 50, they became published authors themselves. They, we published a book last year, in March of last year, called the Dear Freedom Writers. And what we did is that once we received the letters, we selected the authors that we wanted to respond. And then as freedom writers, we responded to them. We responded to them. So that's one way we brought them in and it's going very well. There, um, a lot of our students uh, are, are authors now, published authors are very happy. They continue to do wonderful things in their community. So, but that's one way we do. Uh, another thing is we also um, open it up for, for high schoolers to come in and volunteer during our events. Uh, we all lead, have our events in Long Beach, California. That's what the foundation is, was founded and is still there. So we, we ask for volunteers. A lot of the Freedom Rider children now, they're, they're in high school age. They go back. They, they help the foundation. We teach them how to network. We teach them how to, how to um, put events together. So we teach them real life um, um, skills that they're going to need in whatever field they go. And then with the scholarships, what we do with the scholarship is one of the things that we ask for them to do if they're a recipient of our scholarship is that they, we ask them to come back whenever they can to help out in the, in the foundation, whether it's putting events together, running things, helping Aaron in that foundation. So we give a lot of the recipient, the scholarship recipients and the community an opportunity to come on and, and, branch out and reach out and help out. One of the things that we do with the outside community is to continue to spread hope. You know, hope through education, through making the right choices, and that's one thing that you know anybody else outside of our network could, could definitely do it and help out. You said that you still receive letters, and you know you respond to them. So you must have heard some stories that are similar to yours. Is there a story that really impacted you by heart when you read it? Absolutely, there's just hundreds. One of the things that you know that I share with uh, Ms. B once again is um, when I was doing this full time and I was giving three, four, five presentations a week, it, it, it was, it's heart wrenching when, when you open up your story, you open up your story to two others and then you inspire them to open up. So sometimes I was in the, you know, autographing books, taking pictures and random people will come up from adults to, to teenagers. They will come up and they will open up, oh, you inspire me. So they will share some horrible thing that would happen to them. So, you know, sometimes on the plane, on the ride back home or on the flight home, back home, you know, I will be crying, I'll be emotionally wrecked because of some of the things I, I would hurt. So definitely to pick one will be hard. I've heard hundreds uh, of stories. I definitely connected to many of them and I've reached out, I helped out, I guided them through through that difficult time in their lives. But definitely one that um, that uh, I could say that, that is dear to my heart is the the immigration issue. Definitely, I've have received many letters regarding that, and I have addressed those 
uh, given, you know, had talks and presentations and speeches, you know, in Congress in support of, of, of that. And so it's, it's, that's a topic that's dear to my heart. And that's one of the things, one of the ones that I definitely respond to quickly to um, inspire them to continue to, you know, to fight the good fight. That's awesome. So once, you know, giving speeches, also, you know, sharing your story to the future generation is just the, you know, power of storytelling out there. So I would say, can you talk more about the, just the power of storytelling and how the storytelling has impacted spreading the hope? And, you know, you guys could have stopped after the movie or just stopped after, you know, first establishing the foundation and, you know, passing down to somebody else. But you guys still continue to share your story, you know, from uh, firsthand. And uh, what do you say about just the power of storytelling that has the impact on today's generation and the, you know, future generations? You know, the power of story, uh, storytelling is one of the most important things I say we, we that we could do that is individual because everybody has a voice, everybody has a unique story that that is that should be shared. And in this case, we had the opportunity to share us and, and we were lucky to get it published, you know, but now with social media, you know, that makes it a lot easier to connect, to share this story. You know, if it goes viral, then, you know, what, what better um, success way to make your story more successful than, than that is. But de definitely the power of storytelling, you know, it, it helps you to connect to those people that have similar stories like you. It makes you unique and makes you stand out and giving the opportunity you know, more now, more than ever before, I think it's a great way to get that out there, to get it heard and, and to make some change, you know, and then that's, uh, that's one of the things I always encourage our, my, my students to do is, is your story is as important as mine. Tell it. Find your own unique way to, to be able to share it with the, with the world. And, you know, and I think that's what's different. You know, we, we, we only had one platform, one way of doing it. And, and, you know, luckily it worked for us, but now there's so many different ways that you could get your story reached out, you know, podcast has interviews you know social media postings tiktok you have you know the the uh, endless possibilities and, and that i think that's a good thing and i think that it, every student should or every person should have the the ability to share their their unique journey in this life one question that um first of all thank you for your response one question that i have missed while i'm looking at my notes is that uh, um we are very curious about um how long did it take for the freedom writers to start actually start writing their journals because in the movie it is after the first day so we are you know curious if it's actually right after the first day or everybody was so eager to write their journals or did it take some time some adjustments so that was a question that i have missed but uh we would like to know yeah. it definitely took some time it didn't start right away um it, like it was hard for her to get our attention to get us to actually want to learn so it took her, our goal at that time was to get her to, for her to quit. So we did very, everything in our power to uh, make her question her career choice at that time. So it wasn't until through, you know, try and error and through con constant reminding us that, you know, the importance of education. And then it wasn't until the event of that picture came about um, that changed everything. At that, at that point, she started teaching us about uh, life. She connected life to our experiences made our experiences matter, made our experiences count. And she taught us as a, you know, as a learning moment from there. And then after that, once we started getting motivated and we started to see, hey, our, 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 our story matters. It matters at least to us. And then we started reading literature. She started bringing in literature. The first couple of books that she brought in didn't connect with those very well um, because, you know, time periods, different circumstances, different stories. It wasn't until she, she was able to bring in the Anne Frank book, uh, the Anne Frank diary that that really connected with us. And that's where the idea of writing our own stories came about because one of the things that that we noticed is there wasn't a lot of literature that dealt with teenage issues or teen teenage problems like we were facing at that time. So that's what the, the idea started coming about after reading a few books, after being exposed to a few films that she brought, she brought us in uh, to see, for us to see that we started getting the idea of writing our, our, our own book. And it wasn't until sometime around our, our sophomore year where we started writing our, our, our journals, our own journals. And then it took our sophomore, junior year, and then we started compiling everything. Then we took a few field trips where we had our book. I still remember, and it's, it's, in the, it's not shown in the film, it's shown in the documentary film where we, we get invited to go to Washington to meet the Secretary of Education. And then we take our book, but our book was just, you know, regular copy. So it was about this thick. 
And you can see in the film where he looks at it, he's like, oh, here's a copy of our book. And he looks at it and he kind of looks at it like, what am I supposed to do with this? You know, so something is always, you know, funny for our part, but then eventually later it became published after that. But, you know, that was our first exposure to that. That was how, how our writing our book started, uh, got started. So we talked about like friendship and, you know, so, but it was the movie, it, in the, uh, for, at the beginning, it seemed very hard to build trust between students. So was it the writing? Was it Miss G's behavior? Or was it the common denominator that nobody expected for that class to actually graduate? What was the common denominator that actually, you know, brought the class together and you build that trust? I think it was a, it was a little bit of everything that, she, that that happened in that. We were able to bond in, in, in a way through what Miss G did, through her leadership, through what she exposed us to. But at the same time, we were just probably at that time tired of not being heard and not being understood of being misunderstood of not giving a chance. For example, one of the things that I could say that that changed my life around was that she she believed in me, you know, she and, and I think that was her greatest takeaway that she believed in her students. She believed in what we were capable of doing. And, you know, that's one of I think one of the driving forces behind all of us that she we didn't want to let her down. You know, she had placed that type of faith and she had we had tried everything to get rid of her and she didn't leave. So, you know, we started saying, well, she's probably meant to, to do something here and something great for us, which, you know, little by little she started doing and, she, and we started noticing that. And, you know, I think that's, that was the, the most important thing that she gave us that, that hope, you know, that hope that, that, you know, there, there are teachers, there are great teachers out there. There are great teachers that are there for the right reasons. They are there to motivate and engage. And I think we noticed that once we noticed that we opened up, you know, we lowered our defenses and, and we opened up to the possibility. And, you know, to, to this day, we haven't lowered our hands down. We still are open to the endless possibilities that this story is going to take. And, and we're happy that, that, that we, we achieved that. Other than writing, what are some forms of, you know, expression that young people can express their voices through today? Especially you mentioned that social media is very active and, you know, regarding social media or just writing, you know, what are some best ways that we can get our voices out there today? You know, de definitely art, you know, art, it's a great thing. Music is a great thing. I have, we have a lot of, you know, talented students out there, you know, social media is a big thing, but the, definitely, you know, find what it, whatever works for you in this case, art could be painting, could be creating, could be podcasting. You know, I have a lot of students that are, that are doing this now. You know, as a way to communicate, as a way to get exposed, get exposure to the reality, get to, you know, invite some amazing guests on board. But definitely podcasting, social media, art, music. It's always a great thing. Writing, you know, writing, I still do it. I still journal every day. You know, I journal every day and it's one one, one thing that, that I continue to share and then uh, with with people and, you know, and give, doing these type of presentations. But definitely, you know, there's there's different ways. But art, music is always one that I, I do. I encourage my students to do. I love I, I love art and music. Uh, definitely through writing, um, di different social media outlets that are out there. And, you know, so that's one, some some of the ways, not all the ways, but some ways that they could, you know, share their story. That's awesome. So thank you so much for our discussion. I think I learned a lot. And especially, you know, watching the movie is different. And reading the book is even more different. But hearing it from you was very, very special. So thank you so much for being our guest today, Mr. Carrera. And we have some eTalk special questions for you that we ask at the end of each episode. So number one being, what is your favorite color? Uh, my favorite color, thank you, by the way. It's a pleasure to be here. And my favorite co color is black. Awesome. Um, do you have a certain specific reason? Um, Black, uh, I like it. it. I always liked it. I, you know, I'm a... I love rock and roll music. Uh, you know, I have my room this color black, believe it or not. I, so it's it's just something that has always attracted me. I have always, you know, um, leaned towards a black color. And, you know, so that's why. And it attracts sunshine. So I think the contrary to common belief that, you know, black can be a sad color. I kind of see it as it attracts warmth and sunshine. And, you know, that's there. Number two would be, you know, three books that you would recommend to us. And yes, the Freedom Writers Diary counts. <laughs> de definitely, de definitely our, our books. I, I think our, our Teaching Hope is a, it's a great book that we, we also published. That was published from our, our teachers that, have, that came to our teacher institutes. 
they came together, they, they wrote a book to encourage and motivate teachers to continue to teach their students. And definitely, uh, Dear Freedom Writers, uh, that's a great book, especially because we want to promote and our, our young authors and, and to continue our story um, current and, and alive. I think those are, are great books, not because we had something to do with it, but I think the topic, the subject matter, it's great. I think teachers need to feel inspired. I think students need to feel that, yes, even though you're young, your story could be heard. It, your story is important to be heard. And, you know, we gave it to 50 students from around the world. So we, we have students from a little bit. We selected a specific students from every part of the world to address a, cer a certain topic or a current event that is happening in that particular country. So we just to bring awareness more and more of this to education. That's our ultimate goal here. And what other would be three movies that you would like to recommend to us? Mm. Uh, we, of course, the, the Freedom Writers. Uh, it's a great movie. The the the, uh, the Freedom Writers documentary is definitely because that that particular film is being is told from our perspective, um, from our our perspective, and it's our our life experiences through our our lens through our cameras. And then the other film that I would highly recommend is, hmm. there's so many, I love watching films. Um, for me on a, definitely, I love action films. Um, but in this case, a movie I just watched is that it's a great book, one of my favorite books, The Great Gatsby. I just watched that film. I haven't seen it in a, in a while, but I love that book. I love, so I would recommend that. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least, I think you have mentioned it throughout uh, our discussion, but just for the sake of asking this question, what are your thoughts on art? You know, I love art. I, I think it's a, it's a different form of, uh, of expression that, that could bring a whole different types of emotion. You know, it could, art, art doesn't necessarily have to be a, an, a painting. It could be uh, anything you want, you see or you can see. I think it's a, it's a great way to express your emotions, your feelings. It's a great way to release emotions and feelings. And I think that it's, um, it's an art that is, um, is underappreciated in our schools. I think we could focus more and bringing in more arts, dedicate more time, more funds into arts and expanding our art program. But definitely it, it, it's, a, it's a necessity to, for some people to express their feelings and, and through art. So I think that art is definitely a greater way of expressing art.